Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger. In this lecture, I'll quickly introduce you to cladograms or phylogenetic trees and how to read them and some of the terminology used in describing various groups of vertebrates. These terms we will use throughout the rest of the semester. So it's a good idea to learn these terms now if you've not been introduced to them before. A cladogram is a branching diagram which depicts the relationships between organisms. Organisms that share the same branch are more closely related to each other as evidence from similarities. Now these similarities can be uh, morphology, uh, behavioral, or molecular, such as similarity of the DNA structure in the organisms. Cladograms can be made of individuals, groups of individuals or populations, uh, species, or even higher groups, as long as they share the same traits being compared. Now, I often use the term taxa or taxon to describe a species, a genus, or higher grouping. These are basically the tips of the tree branches. Cladistics, the study of cladograms, arose during the 1980s and 1990s as computers became more powerful for the analysis of large sets of traits. Although the method dates back to the 1950s with the publication of Willie Henning's book Phylogenetic Systematics. In a subsequent lecture, I'll show you how cladograms are produced using different software programs. Today, cladograms are found in most introductory biology textbooks, so this may be a quick review for you if you've taken biology. Cladograms come in all different sizes and shapes, some with lines coming off at diagonals, others with a squared off branching pattern. The order that the names appear at the top or on the side of the tree matter very little. As each branch can be twisted such that the same cladogram can depict a different order of name. Now this often confuses many students. So it's best not to look at the order of the names at the top or edge of the tree, but the branching pattern itself. Now the purpose of a cladogram is to group organisms together based on how closely related they are to each other. Each branch is a separate grouping of taxa. There are three different types of groupings. Monophyletic groups are characterized by shared derived characteristics called synapomorphies. These are groups which are produced if you were to use only a single cut to prune a tree. Monophyletic groups are considered the only true grouping. It includes all of the organisms which are much more closely related to each other. Organisms that share a single branch are called sister groups. Synapomorphies are traits that define a monophyletic grouping. Throughout the semester, we'll describe many synapomorphies which define a group. They should be homologous, indicating that they evolved only once. An autoapomorphy is a trait that is unique to a taxon. Autoapomorphies are frequently used to diagnose or identify a taxon or define a new species. Paraphyletic groups consist of the descendants of the last common ancestor of the group's members minus a small number of monophyletic groups of descendants. Now typically just one branch. Note that in paraphyletic groups you would need to use two cuts to prune the tree into a paraphyletic group. Paraphyletic groups are frequently used in paleontology. For example, dinosaurs are considered a paraphyletic group since they do not include the descendants, birds. Often paleontologists refer to dinosaurs as non-avian dinosaurs to describe this paraphyletic grouping. 
One of the biggest limitations of cladograms is that they are unable to depict temporal or stratigraphic relationships. Paraphyletic groups are characterized by one or more homoplasies. These are convergent traits. These are character traits that have converged or reverted so as to appear to be the same, but which have not been inherited from a common ancestor. Polyphyletic groups require multiple cuts to form the branch, um, and polyphyletic groupings often emphasize a single or a couple of traits which are shared, rather than looking at the whole set of traits and similarity between groups. An example of such a trait is in the polyphyletic grouping pachyoderm, which groups animals that have tough, rough skin, like uh, rhinos, hippos, elephants together. Now, despite the fact that these animals don't have other traits in common with each other, the thick skin convergently evolved in these groups of animals, and likely is a function of their larger body size and the hot climates that they live in. All right, you should now be able to analyze a given cladogram or phylogenetic tree, including differentiating a monophyletic grouping, a paraphyletic grouping, and a polyphyletic grouping. All right, thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin slash burger.org. Links are found in the descriptions below.